All right, rear brakes on a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. This is a 2006 S430. If you've ever done brakes before, this is super easy. If you've never done them before, this is going to be easy. First thing is remove the tire. I'm going to be needing new tires, so this is more of an inspection than an actual replacement for me. The other side was fine. The way to remove the clip is you just touch it and then you bring it out otherwise it'll fly out next is you just kind of pull on the brake caliper a little bit you just see how it's loose good enough next we're going to unscrew the caliper mounting bolts that is going to take a T40 I'm going to use a ratchet with a T40 on it. You just get in there and you ratchet the bolts out. The passenger side does have wear indicators, so you want to be careful of that. You want to go ahead and unplug that. So you wait, the way you do that is you just take your, it's an external torque, so you need a T10. Just uh, unscrew that. Hopefully I didn't get in the way of the camera. Is that the longest screw in the world or what? And then, these are copper wires and I don't want to mess with those so I'm just going to take the caliper off. So the caliper mounting bolts are like shoulder bolts and so you just unscrew it enough for it to, to be loose. You don't have to remove it completely. Although this one looks like I may or may not be able to remove it completely to show you. Yep. See, it's just a, like a shoulder bolt. Highly polished. Two of those. Sometimes the ends get clogged with dirt. You may have to get some brake cleaner and clean it out. I recommend using a mirror or something to look at them first. Make sure they're clean. Spray them out with some brake flu uh, brake cleaner if you need to. Don't squish the dirt in there with your tool because then you really won't be getting a good grip on it. So clean those out first if you need to. All right, I kept thinking the thread was out and it wasn't. Well, it just slides right off like this. My camera, and then the pad just pops right out. And then we can also look at how this is connected in here. See that? It's just plugged right in. So it's just plugged right into the uh, inside brake pad. There's a hole in there. For it to slide into. I know you can't see it, but anyway, you can see the stem that will go into the brake pad. It's just nothing more than cleaning. I'll just clean all this stuff up and lubricate the contact points and put it back together. Well, as you can see, it's just a single piston arrangement, so you can just take your C clamp and uh, compress it as you need to. No big deal, very straightforward, just like any other car. I just need to compress mine a little bit because I'm putting the old pads back on. So this was just more of an inspection for me than uh, a pad replacement because the tires were worn. So I always do extra. Um, I'll clean all this up and uh, it's very light. I wouldn't worry about hanging the caliper as far as keeping the weight off of it for hose tension. The fronts, yes. The rear, this thing is so light, it is unbelievable. Clearly, it's made from aluminum. So, I'll just clean all this up so everything gets a light brushing. Hose it off. And... 
inside. And that's good. So to remove the rotor, you need to take off the caliber mounting bracket, which is two bolts. I needed an 18 millimeter socket and I needed a wrench for the top one because of the anti-sway bar. So you break those loose and take the bracket off. Looks like it had some blue Loctite on it. Then with the uh, brake release you take this screw out which is missing on mine and it should come right off. All right, I had to hit it with my two pound maul to get it off, I guess because of parking brake. So, that should just come right off because there's uh, some shoes on the inside for your parking brake. And then of course your disc as you're stopping on the outside. All right, all that did was make me do some more cleaning. I've got my little battery terminal brush here. I'm just, whatever's at hand. I've just cleaned all this up. Get ready for the new rotors. I'm going to go ahead and order rotors because I'm not happy with these. They're, they're galled. Both sides are galled, which bothers me. The pads are okay, but the rotors are galled. That tells me something happened. It's when, when you buy a used car, you gotta expect these things. So the brand I went with was Zimmerman. It wasn't the cheapest and it wasn't the most expensive. I don't know who the OEM provider is for Mercedes, but it's made in Germany, whatever that means. Whether that implies quality or not, it has what it's called a Z coating. That's kind of new, and as you can see, looks like it's been thoroughly sandblasted, but really that's a coating on there, and that looks pretty nice to me, and the reason I replaced them was because these guys here... Just had a, they were rigid, and they had, I mean rigid, they had ridges on them. So, new rotors. Also had to buy a new set screw for one of them. Uh, the screw was missing on the one side, so. This just basically holds the rotor in place until everything's put back together. So it's, it's not a critical item. However, if it gets stuck, if it's very corroded and rusted on you and you need to get it off, just don't be scared to like hit it really hard with a hammer to get it off like I demonstrated. I hit it pretty lightly for the video. But you can really whack the crap out of those things to, uh, they call it a set screw. Yeah, brake disc set screw. So if, you have, if you're really struggling or if you round it off, you can't get it out, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Just uh, hit it really hard. You should never, ever have to replace the uh, parking brake shoes. The star wheel adjuster is only accessible from the inside, unlike American cars where you can access it uh, from the back here. Now you can, if you have to, line up one of these holes here and put a screwdriver through there and click on it up or down as appropriate if you do need to loosen them up. So that's how you access it if you have to. Otherwise, you shouldn't ever have to touch them. So what I like to do is paint an extremely thin coating of anti-seize on there. Just on the contact areas. It'll help the next person if they have to replace the rotors. Hopefully it won't be me. And 
this will last the lifetime of the car but if it is me if I do keep it for two three hundred thousand miles or more then uh, odds are I'll replace them again and they'll come off super easy all right let's see how easy this rotor goes on super easy um, if it if you have trouble you can put a board on it and hit it you have to get over the lip here hit it if necessary I didn't need to do that very 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 light coating of anti-seize just on the contact area not even on the threads the threads are coated to help it stay secure so the anti-seize is just to stop the screw from adhering to the uh, rotor when it oxidizes. There we go. So I have the bracket all cleaned up. What I'm going to do is put some anti-seize in the contact area, but I wanted to point out that you didn't need the whole length smeared up. The working area is only going to be right in here near the end, so there's no need to uh, slop the whole thing up. All right, with the caliper mounting bolts and the bracket mounting bolts, you want to start them both. Don't tighten one down first and then try the other one. Also, you want to make sure that uh, your rotors are clean after you mount it and that uh, there's no contacting, uh, that it's not touching the uh, rotor after it's put together. So I decided to replace the pads anyway. The OEM pads have a much higher carbon content because Germany's in a colder country. It's on par with Maine as far as latitude is concerned. So um, you see this chamfer area right in here? That's the control noise. You can also use that as a wear indicator when it's on the car and you're looking at them. Uh, but anyway, it's a much higher carbon content. And that's where all your dusting comes from. So I'm going to go with uh, Wagner. I like Wagner Thermal Quiet on the fronts. That's what I always had on my BMWs. And I'm going to go with the Wagner Quick Stop for the back. It uh, doesn't dust as much and I won't have to clean my wheels as often. So I'll apply some anti-seize around the contact areas or where the potential contact areas are for the bracket. And let's see, I don't think you'll be able to see the hole for the wear indicator. If you can, great. But uh, make sure that's clear. And these are already shimmed, so you don't have to put the anti-squeal goop on there. So between the shims and these chamfers and the way it's cut, uh, I, I really haven't uh, heard squeaky brakes on the road or had squeaky brakes on my, any of my vehicles in many many years. Uh, that's pretty much a thing of the past. So you really don't have to invest in all that goop. So with my anti-seize on the potential contact areas, just put in the pad like this and then you set the caliper in place. Just as easy as that. Start both of the bolts, start them, don't tighten them until both of them are started and then you can tighten them down Then you pump the brakes and uh, check the fluid level. And finally the anti-rattle clip. Um, it's pretty easy for Mercedes unlike BMWs where they're hardcore. See I started in the hole here and move it out of the way. See how it's behind it needs to be in front. Well, you just hopefully my hands aren't in the way. You just pull it out a little bit, stretch it, click it right on. Very, very easy. No hammering like with BMWs. Alright, now it's time to mount the tires. Um, here's what started it all. Is 
these uh, two things. Uh, this was all, this was damaged when I bought it. I missed it on the walk around and I paid like $110 to get the scuff repaired. The paint started coming off so the guy redid it at no cost and so that's what's going on here and he inflated it to 40 it needs to be 33 and then I'll put my little logo uh, caps back on here when I'm done getting the tire pressure to where I want it and then I'll mount them back up.